So I'm Friedman Freund, and um, I want to introduce myself in uh, to you because when I was young, I was really fascinated by biology, and later at the university, I was charmed by minerals, and now I try to link the two. And in the process, I ask why are we and many animals able to sense, for instance, an approaching earthquake, which is a purely geophysical, geological, but geophysical process, which involves a number of sub-processes that are of great interest, I think, even in the context of what we are discussing here. So now I go this one. So Moise kindly asked me to give this presentation and I must confess that I know really next to nothing about the complex question that you are addressing here. And But I nevertheless hope that I will be able to tell you something useful about interesting physical processes in the solid earth that affect many of us in many different ways. There is anecdotal evidence that animals feel restless before major earthquakes. And I will show in the next slide uh, some demonstration of this. And humans do so too. There are, um, I have a plot which I didn't find that actually prior to a major earthquake in southern Siberia, uh, about five days, four or five days before, there was a significant and sudden onset of um, admission to the local hospital system. And um, it culminated and continued to rise when a major magnitude eight or so earthquake happened in the region and then faded away after a week or 10 days. So uh, there is some link between this. And here I show uh, just a graph of an experiment that was carried out in, in China and published in 2009, where they had laboratory um, mice colonies in an area that then unexpectedly became a subject of the disasters, magnitude eight earthquake, Sichuan earthquake of 2009. And when the, the researchers looked at their laboratory mice data, the mice were happily living there in their lo local environment, but suddenly three days before they stopped moving, they tried to hide in the corners and then the earthquake happened. And for two or three more days, the mice did not want to come out again. And then they slowly, but in a, comp in a chaotic way, they resumed their daily activities. So clearly something happened before this particular earthquake, which caused the animals to react and humans would be reacting to. So we need to look at the process that happens before earthquake, specifically the processes during the buildup of mechanical stresses in the rocks and what happens during the deformation of rocks. And uh, during deformation, mineral grains are shifting relative to each other and also at the higher degree of deformation, individual grains will come to be sheared and deformed. So why is that important? Because all rocks, I'm talking about silicate rocks, not uh, limestone, but all rocks are forming in the presence of water, or well, limestone too. And um, if we look at silicate rocks or here silica as an example, uh, water reacts with it and forms hydroxyls, pair of hydroxyls. However, a hydroxyl pair can do something very strange. It can undergo a auto redox reaction by forming by splitting off a hydrogen molecule and form a peroxy bond. So the pair of hydroxyls combine across this link, form a peroxy bond and the hydrogen molecule is released. 
So many hydrox hydroxyls sit on grain boundaries in, in typical rock, and therefore these peroxylings sit on grain boundaries and link different grains. So if the grains are um, deformed, peroxyling become deformed and unstable. And thus they become supremely sensitive to mechanical deformation of the rocks, such as prior to any earthquake. And I'm talking here only about the solid earth. We can also discuss this the process for that happened under the ocean, but I don't want to touch on this now for the sake of time. A peroxy bond is something inorganic, but it's actually a sleeping ROS. Why that? Because when a peroxy bond exists in a silicate matrix on the, shown here on the left side, any neighboring oxygen can transfer an electron into this bond. And then this electron become lo localized in the broken, somewhat broken, a peroxy bond and the oxygen that donated the electron becomes a ROS. And at the same time, it becomes a very interesting electronic charge carrier, a highly mobile, highly reactive uh, charge carrier that can, oops, I think you can go on. Uh, is this one? I think so. It's one. Yes. Well, yeah. So that this is now an O minus, and we understand quite a bit about this O minus and electronic uh, things about the delocalized wave function. It's too complicated to address here, but. Just for, for your information, it is the mechanism that causes the electrical conductivity of the Earth's crust, which we use every day when we plug in our electrical appliances into the wall plug. And we, one of the plugs is ground, and we dump our excess electricity to the ground using this type of electric conductivity. And this positive hole is highly mobile in itself, highly reactive, and it is symbolized in, by H dot. H dot is just, H stands for a hole. A hole is just a sim other word for a defect electron taken from transistor uh, physics. And that's how it looks like. So on the left side, you have a peroxy bond. And if the peroxy bond is stressed, you can show very easily by very simple qualitative um, electro, uh, quantum mecha mechanical um, arguments. If this is bent, like it shows on the left side, the peroxy bond becomes unstable and it accepts an electron from any oxygen in the neighborhood. And that oxygen then becomes an ROS, an inorganic ROS. Therefore, peroxy are everywhere. And therefore, in the geological environment, therefore, ROS are everywhere. And since we live in a geological environment and interact with them, it is important for understanding these processes. So why should we be interested? And once an activated H dot, so this whole positive whole chart here, it travels through the Earth's crust. It travels at high speed of the order of 100 to 300 meters per second, which is hundreds of kilometers, thousands of kilometers per hour, can travel over large distances easily tends to even hundreds of kilometers, plus the positive hole charge carriers are mobile in the Earth's crust and therefore in the Earth's crust, they among themselves 
repel each other and therefore they accumulate at the surface of the earth. And then that's where they interact with all living organisms. And of course, RS, these type of inorganic RS have been around since the dawn of time and surely before even life appeared. Now, if we look at the periodic table, oxygen sits there uh, in the second uh, row on the sixth column, and ox therefore oxygen can exist maximally in a minus two oxidation state, in which case it would have the electronic configuration of neon, but it can also exist in the one minus state, in which case it has the electronic configuration of a fluorine atom. Now, a fluorine atom is, I think, probably the most aggressive oxidizer that exists in the world. And it is mitigated by the fact that the wave function is delocalized and blah, blah, blah. There are a number of factors why this are naturally process that can occur. So usually oxygen exists in the two minus state, but when it exists in the one minus state, it is a inorganic ROS. And these ROS travel through the Earth's crust at speeds of about, typically is 100 meters per second. We measured up to about 180 meters per second. Theoretically, it could reach up to 300 meters per second. And we have measured it over traveling over distance of meters in milliseconds. And uh, we know from field observation, it can travel over distances of hundreds of kilometers through the Earth's crust prior to major earthquake when large volumes of the Earth's crust are being stressed and these ROS, these inorganic ROS are activated. So how do they affect living things? Frankly, we don't know, I don't know, uh, or at least not yet. And that's why we are sitting here, the three of us and talking with you and uh, uh, get you interested in this idea and this project. So uh, it is true that peroxy is still widely ignored in mainstream science. If you Google peroxy in the geological uh, literature, you find nothing. Peroxy is a word that doesn't exist in the geological literature. People don't even accept or acknowledge that peroxy exists in the natural environment, except for atmospheric processes, photochemically driven and so on. No, peroxy actually exists as part of the solid Earth, and it has plays a major role in the evolution of planet Earth and the life on Earth. Understanding peroxy may help us understand aspects of the Earth that are still not well understood and even less accepted. So I want to introduce here um, that indeed all rocks all silicate rocks on Earth contain peroxy because all rocks are formed in the presence of water. Therefore, all minerals dissolve water and react with the silicate matrix by forming pairs of hydroxyls. And this pair of hydroxyls sitting next to each other, facing each other, can undergo this transformation reversible where a hydrogen molecule is split off if of course the hydrogen diffuses away or is removed that it becomes irreversible and you would have a arrow that points only from the left to the right and then you end up with having a peroxy and a, the hydrogen molecule may dissipate or may even degas and leave uh, the rock environment and actually this is something quite interesting in the mining, in the mining industry, hydrogen coming out of the walls of the, mine, of the mining shafts is the main concern in addition to CO, but the hydrogen is the most um, feared gas for explosion in mining environments. So again, hydrogen is every peroxy is everywhere 
and because all rocks are formed in the presence of water and all minerals are contaminated with water forming these hydroxyls. And here again, a repetition of this reaction, the hydration of a SiO, Si bond on the left side, on the upper side left, that uh, forms a pair of hydroxyls. And this pair of hydroxyls facing each other head to head, proton to proton, and can split off this molecular hydrogen and you form a peroxy bond. Uh, doing weathering, uh, the peroxy reacts with water and forms hydrogen peroxide. And the hydrogen peroxide on the surface of the earth decomposes by itself catalytically to water and oxygen. And uh, some of you who might have, have read a little bit about how the earth um, acquired its oxygen in the atmosphere, the prevailing view, with no substance to report it really, that early cyano, cyano bacteria have involved some little genius involved oxygenic <laughs> photosynthesis and they started to pump oxygen into the earth atmosphere and uh, that was the beginning of the, the start of the oxygen rich atmosphere but uh, generated during the um, peroxy, when you look ROS in the in the literature, for instance, I googled it, and there I have this quote that reactive of your species are generated during mitochondrial oxidative metabolism as well as in response to bacterial invasion. Not a single word about the also parallel presence of peroxy as a result of a geological, purely geological, geophysical, geochemical processes. So this is essentially what I wanted to contribute to our discussion, that um, studying these processes, formation of peroxy, is fascinating. And I think the direction that we have been discussing among ourselves and in this presentation um, could link to these processes in an understanding of the reaction of living organisms to the activation of these electronic charge pairs and how they affect us, our psyche, our, our brains, and uh, what we can do with this kind of information. So I think that is all I had to say. Thank you.